Welcome back to another video. My name is Abby and today we are talking about the most powerful way to manifest love. Now, if you like video topics like this and you want more, hit that subscribe button, click the bell. As soon as new videos come out, you will be notified. And if you really like this channel, you really like this video, you want to show your support, a great and easy way to do so is hit that like button below. It really helps to spread this information and generally lets me know that you like this content. So back to the video, dramatic drum roll, the most powerful way to manifest love. So if you're watching this video right now, I'm going to make an assumption that you are looking to manifest love. Potentially you're new at this and you're starting out. Potentially you've tried many, many times and are absolutely frustrated and don't understand what's happening and have tried so many different techniques and starting to wonder if it's even possible. Wherever you are in your experience with manifesting love, this video will help you understand what's happening and ultimately where manifesting love will come from. And if you're in the second school of individuals where you are trying so hard, you've tried everything and you're at your wits end, I absolutely can relate to you. This is how I spent most of my life. It wasn't until I learned what I will share with you in this video where things actually did change. I continued to do the same thing. I continued to try new things and I tried so hard and just ended up in so much pain and disappointment and frustration and really continually getting rejected by people I thought were gonna be the ones that were the manifestation of love. And really that wasn't the case. So in this video, I will share exactly what ultimately helped me see a different reflection and truly be able to see an external reflection of the internal wealth that I actually had been developing over time. So let's get into the word love. What does that even mean? Well, this comes from the Latin word amo, and basically that means to cherish, right? To like. And this is what I found really interesting, which I'll talk about later, to fall in love with. And the second part of this video to understand is manifest. What does that mean? Manifesting isn't, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to start writing affirmations, and I'm going to do this thing starting now you have been manifesting. However, you've been manifesting this reflection that you don't want to see. You've been manifesting lack of love or disappointment from love or whatever it is that you're specifically experiencing right now. That doesn't make you bad. That doesn't make it where that situation that's been, you've been experiencing is what you deserve. You're not lacking anything. The only thing that's happened is an experience has happened. You have taken a meaning from it and ultimately recreate in microclimates this same idea and walk away feeling the way that you feel. We're gonna get more into what exactly I'm talking about in that and how you can change it. But it's important to understand that you are manifesting right now. So what we want to do is get you aware of that and get you to understand that whatever it is that you believe about yourself in regards to love, that is what you are seeing reflected back to you. This can be hard to take. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Whatever it is that you've been experiencing, rejection, abandonment, neglect, that is not a reflection of your value. Repeat, if you've been getting rejected, if you've been neglected, abandoned emotionally, that is not your value. That is not what you deserve. However, what it is reflecting to you is an unconscious belief potentially of what you believe about yourself, of the worth that you think you deserve, of ultimately the experience that you think you deserve and why. Why do you think that and why do you consciously want one thing and unconsciously keep getting another experience? That's because there's something in shadow. There's some part of you that you're not aware of. You could potentially be rejecting it and pushing away, disassociating from it as a way to keep yourself safe. So most likely when you were younger, you experienced a situation when it comes to love and your self-worth. That situation has happened X amount of years ago and it's not about changing that situation. The thing that matters most is about you changing the meaning of who you were in that situation because whatever it is, maybe your parents were really busy and they were trying their hardest to bring physical resources. However, they neglected you emotionally, even though they might've been present in their physical bodies, 
emotionally you needed things from them that they weren't able to provide at that time. That doesn't make them bad. However, they were doing the best they could in that situation, as were you, and you were left with a need that was never addressed. So what's happening right now is when you go into the world, you find people who physically might be there, but emotionally they don't have that depth. So rather than going deep within yourself, addressing that wound, addressing that need, understanding what type of person, what type of situation that you deserve and need to feel that, to feel whole and complete and realize you are whole and complete and you don't need an external person to give you that wholeness. Because you aren't aware of that right now, you go out and continually recreate in these microclimates this situation that happened way long time ago. And that's not as a way to torture yourself, that's only a way for basically like a little, like a little bell. Ding, 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 hey, hey, we've got a pain. Hey, we got a pain that happened we need to address. Hey, we got a pain that we got to address. And basically every time these things come up, you blame the other person. That other person is basically getting the power. That power staying with them keeps you in the same state. So the most powerful way to manifest love is to start looking at what it is happening in your current circumstances. Again, I just talked about neglect. What about abandonment? What if you keep finding people who are gonna leave or threaten to leave? Or basically, if you do something that's not to their liking, they punish you by emotionally being distant. Whatever it is, look and see, okay, have I experienced this before? Because most likely, the circumstances that continually happen in your life these patterns are recreations of what happened in your childhood. And some of you might be thinking, well, I had a good childhood. Everything was good. You know, your parents were around and you had food and, you know, nothing really bad happened. That can be really confusing to say, okay, well, I'm okay. Why do I keep having this? Nothing bad happened in my childhood. It doesn't have to be terrible and horrible. Well, all it needs to do is to not have met one of the needs that you needed emotionally. That can be very hard sometimes to sift through as to what you needed. You were a kid, you didn't know. So basically, since that wasn't being met, you thought, okay, well, maybe I don't deserve this. Maybe I'm not worthy of that. I'm gonna push it down. And still feeling that absence, still longing for that. So starting to look for it in other people, starting to need it in other people, and thinking that you can't do it on your own. This can create codependent dynamics and I say this because this was my life a hundred percent in the first part of my life until I started realizing these things and it wasn't some miracle that happened where all of a sudden I stopped it was a series of really painful toxic relationships which ultimately brought me to a brink of a really bad place and I had to make a choice and ultimately I started making choices that were for my own good and started realizing oh I am whole and complete oh, I have been attracting all these types of people. The dynamics of the relationship were very, very similar. Even though people were from all walks of life, how I was feeling from the interactions was really similar. And then I started realizing, oh, Hmm, that's how I felt when I was little. And my dynamic in childhood was that I reasoned that I needed to do something really big, that I needed to win something and prove something and, and be a winner or hero, then I would get love. Anytime there's a dynamic of this, if this, then that, know that that is a representation of a transactional love, meaning if I do hard work, then I get this. If I win the thing, then I'll get my mom's love or my dad's love or whoever it is that you're looking for. If I go out and I'm a hero, if I go out and this person's in a, a big need and I go in and I save the day, then they'll love me. If I am hopeless and helpless and they need to come and rescue me, then I'll serve a purpose in their life. And you see how dependent that is in the dynamics. Basically, that is codependent. And anytime you have the codependence, you're sacrificing who you really are so that you'll fit in the container of who you think you need to be. 
So if you've been living that way, it's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. You have been trying to get your needs met. However, you did not have clarity in how to do that. So you use different coping mechanisms, codependent behavior potentially, or continually finding the same dynamic so that you could bring awareness to it, so that you can heal it, so that you can realize that that's not what you deserve. You had a meaning that you interpreted when you were a child. Now you can go back there with your adult mind and your emotional tools that you have gained since that age and re-reason on it realize oh okay I see where that came from and I see that that's not true I give myself a new meaning and I can bring that into my adult life right now and I no longer have to seek emotionally unavailable people people who want to neglect me people who aren't really ready to commit because now that I've changed that in me now that you are going to be rooted in yourself and not abandon your needs because ultimately what I found in my relationship is I continued to abandon myself to be who it was that I thought the other person wanted me to be, self-abandonment, and I tried so hard, okay, if I need to do this, okay, I'm edited that, I'll go ahead and self-reject there. Yeah, I'll neglect that over there even though I can hear I'm in pain and it's okay, I can make this work. I can get this person to love me because if they love me, then I'm valuable. If they accept me, Maybe I can accept myself. Maybe I can find a little bit of worth in my existence if they can love me. And it was so dependent on their approval, so dependent on their opinion. And ultimately it led me over and over and over and over into heartbreak. Cause you can see they were going to reflect what the self rejection that I was doing to myself, the emotional neglect that I was doing so that I was sending that out so desperate to get that thing from them that ultimately I was finding that reflection. So I hope you can see here that whatever it is that you're seeing reflected back to you, it's an indication of going in. So the most powerful way to manifest love is to start going inside and seeing what is blocking it, seeing what value that you have of yourself that you have created from some kind of dynamic when you were younger. The thing that changed my life dramatically was to start going in my life and in my world, start seeing the patterns of my past. Why was I doing that? Oh, I so desperately wanted love. And I started giving myself that love. I started realizing that I don't need a relationship to define my worth. I don't need a relationship to prove that I, it's okay for me to exist. I don't need a relationship so that I can have value in the world. I have value right now in who I am and therefore ultimately I found a relationship that echoed that value that I changed in my life originally. I was the cause and I therefore found that effect in a secure, loving, supportive and valuing relationship. It wasn't I felt unworthy and then I found somebody who gave me worth. I had to find worth. I had to find love. I had to find value. And then just like I always use the example of a mirror, since I changed all those values on my shirt, I now am valuable. I now am worthy. I now am lovable. I saw that reflected back. The most powerful thing you can do is start looking at the dynamics you're experiencing right now. Look at the origin. What is it that you believe about yourself? Start to dissolve those beliefs. Then you can use affirmations, visualizations to build that new version of you, but addressing what has blocked that. Your natural way of being in the world is love. Earlier I talked about the Latin word of love, AMO, and basically falling in love with somebody. Two people in love, their being, their thoughts and feelings are in the state of love. So those two people coming together in the state of love, not falling and then, oh, because of the other person, then you feel love. You already feel love in you. You already are delighted and enjoy that. You are in that vibration. You can find it in yourself, in other people, platonic relationships, in nature. And therefore those two people come together in the state of love. As you start to clear your view of who you really are and the meanings that you've given old patterns and old situations, clear that, finding the worth in you, seeing that then reflected back to you will radically change what you can manifest with love. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe. If you haven't done so already, like this video and I'll see you in the next one.